Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am doing great. A little better. Okay, that's a little better. No more centered. I am waiting for this thing to open up. I don't know what it still is tonight, but I was looking forward to doing some more music as I talk to you, but maybe not. Maybe not. I even have my little earbud in. I'm going to take it out. If I don't need it, it just keeps like, I don't know what's wrong with it. Alright, so tonight I want to talk to you about, uh, oh my, I forgot how I worded this. I do that sometimes. Let me pull this up and find out. Because I have forgotten. Yeah, oh my. That doesn't want to work either. Well, I thought I had everything ready. I was actually sitting here listening to some stuff on YouTube. And I thought, oh, well, I've got everything ready. Well, apparently not. So I hope you had an awesome Friday. Um, our son still is not feeling well. Um, a little better than yesterday, but still kind of under the weather. We did get some allergy medicine in him today, so hopefully that will help. Try to get some more into him tonight, and hopefully he'll be all new by tomorrow. Usually doesn't take very long uh, once he does get a little allergy flare up. Um, just kind of do not give him dairy while he's having an allergy flare up because it turns into a sinus infection. So anyway, it's so good to see you tonight. Um, my name is Charm and this is my ministry that God has called me to. Awesome Treasures Ministry because not that I am an awesome treasure, but to God we are all awesome treasures. He loves us all. So, it doesn't look like, it looks like this phone's just going to be starting all night. So, let's just go ahead and jump into some prayer. I'm pushing my computer back a little bit so I can put my arm here. When my hip gets better, I'm going to get back down on my knees like I used to. I do that in the mornings, but it's just a little harder and a little bit more painful in the afternoon. God, we just come to you and we just thank you, God. We thank you for sending your son that um, died for every one of us, God, and offers salvation to every one of us, God. There is no one that is not invited into your kingdom, God. We just thank you because you are the great I Am and the great Jehovah. You are our creator, our sustainer, our provider, our protector. You are our shelter in the storm, God. You are amazing and powerful and mighty, but yet you are loving and kind, compassionate, forgiving. You are faithful, God. You keep all your promises. We just thank you for all that you are and for all that you do. We thank you for loving us. We love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And we just want to lift up the loss to you, God. We just pray that you would open their eyes and their ears to the truth, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved, God. And we pray for the prodigals to uh, return, God. We pray for them to remember the relationship that they had and for them to return and repent and uh, let you reconcile that relationship with them. God, we pray for all the disasters right now, just a lot of shootings, a lot of senseless, what I call senseless violence, God. We just pray for these families that have been impacted, God. We just pray that you would be with them, that if they need, their family member needs healing, that you would heal them. If they have passed, God, that you would be with these families, that you would give them peace, comfort, and strength. But we pray for all truth in all these situations, God. We pray to know the whole truth. And we pray also, God, for truth 
to rise above all the lies that we hear every day, God. We pray for your truth. We know that your truth reigns, and we know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and there is no other way to come to you except through him. And uh, God, we just pray for uh, people that have lost loved ones. We just pray for peace, comfort, and strength for them. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, okay, salvation. Salvation. I have my salvation bracelet on. I made these last year after camp for our youth kids. And I made me one too. It has my date of 5-14-91. That is the date that I got saved. And I was 31. I was not a young um, teen. I was not a young adult. I was older. But um, I had the privilege of being raised in a Christian home and I did go to church all my life. I had a little bit of time when I was at college that I never darkened the door of a church, but when I would come home and visit my mom, I'd go to church with her. But anyway, so I got saved at a revival. So I enjoy revivals and um, I was going through a really hard time and I'm not going to go into detail on that, but um, I want to talk to you about salvation and so let's see how I worded this because I do not remember. And I'm sorry, I probably should be able to remember, but there were two titles that I had floating around in my head. Salvation is the key to complete. So when we get saved through Jesus, it makes us complete because there is a part of our heart that only Jesus can fill. So nothing else, no material possession, no person, no anything. Just Jesus can fill that part of our heart. And so that's why I put salvation is the key to complete. Because yesterday when I woke up, um, that was on my mind. Salvation is key. So I kind of spent all day, you know, trying to, okay, is key to what? Is key, it's key to making us complete, to making us, um, to putting us on the Christianity journey that God wants us to be on. So, um, I thought we could look up some scriptures tonight and, um, we could offer some salvation for maybe somebody who wants to be saved. I may not be on here very long. I'm, I am, I'm fighting a bladder infection. I didn't know what was wrong with me, but now I do. And I know why I haven't felt good today, that I had all these wonderful things that I wanted to do today that I haven't gotten done, and now I know. So I'm going to be drinking more water than what I normally do. And um, hopefully by tomorrow it will be better. I know I think our son is dealing with allergies. I'm kind of dealing with, I, I've gotten up two mornings in a row with a, a very um, strong headache. Alright, I'm going to turn this thing off. It's, this is so weird that it's just doing this. I may restart it. It's a pretty good phone, but this is why I use this other one. Because I started having some problems with it. And so I thought, I have to have a phone. I use my phone for to do music at youth. I use it for a hotspot. And I use my phone... Pretty much all day long, I'm listening to stuff on my phone. Okay, so let's look up some scriptures. And I did have time to number them. Can't even get this stupid thing to turn off now. <laughs> Thought if I restarted it, maybe it would go. Oh, hey. Alright, well, whatever. Maybe I am not meant to listen to music tonight. Maybe it would be a distraction. Alright, but I have my Bible here. 
This is the one I prefer because it's not hard to flip through like that other one which is so old. I'm afraid I'm going to rip pages. Okay, so Psalms 3.8. See what Psalms 3.8 says about salvation. Okay, so Psalms 3 8 says this A salvation belongeth unto the Lord, thy blessing is upon thy people. Okay, I'm going to read 7 also. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. And that is a Psalm of David. I really enjoy reading Psalms of David. So salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy people. So we can't be saved through any other way except through Jesus. He is the only way. So let's read Psalm 37, 39 and see what it says. I think that's the next one. All right, I'm just annoyed by that phone over there. Okay, 37, 39 says this. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. So in order to be saved, we have to trust in Jesus. And... Um, he is our strength, and He will deliver us from the evil. He will do that for us. So let's also look at Psalm 62. 1. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From Him cometh my salvation. He is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. How long will ye imagine mis mischief against a man? You shall be slain, all of you, as a bowing wall shall be, shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. You know, God is a very loving, compassionate, very patient God. But there is going to come a point where God has had enough. He's had enough of all the sin that he sees. He's had enough of um, the blasphemy against him, against Jesus, and against the Holy Spirit, and against his children. You know, blasphemy against his children. And so, there will come a day, and he will be the righteous judge. And he will exact his wrath upon the unrighteous okay and we don't want to be here none of us want to be here we want to be saved we want to be saved and we want to be with Jesus so you do not if you are not saved yet you do not want to be here for that so let's read Matthew 7 21 And you know, getting saved is not hard. It's not a hard thing. It's really very easy. And so this is what Jesus himself says in Matthew seven twenty one. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is heaven, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So we have to, we have to come to Jesus. We have to believe that He is God's one and only Son. 
and um, we have to do the will of God are we going to be perfect all the time no we're not going to be perfect but we need to repent of our sins when we have sin we need to repent of it and we need to repent means turn away that doesn't mean to stay in it so if you're in sin you need to get out of it because that is not the way of God that is not what that is not the will of God. That is not what He wants for us. Because sin, sin brings consequences. And sin is not obedience to God. And when we are sinning, we are missing out on blessings from God from being obedient. So we do not want to stay in sin. It is not a good place to be. I'm fixing a chunk of my phone out the door, but I'm not. I'm being patient with it. It's been a good phone, but it's getting on my nerves tonight. Okay, so that is what Jesus himself says, that not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter into heaven with him. Because we have to do the will of God. We have to believe. We have to accept him as our Savior and we have to do the will of God so let's move on to John 6 44 I tried to get them in really good order but I usually get a few of them out John 6 44 and then I saved my favorite for last John 6 44 says this no man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me to draw sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me, not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God. He hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh which I will give for the life of this world. Okay, well, I'm not going to read any more, but Jesus is the only way to God. And God knows who's going to accept and who is not. But you know what? It is not our job to judge who we think is saved and who uh, we think is not saved. That's not our job. That is God's job to know who is going to accept Jesus as their Savior and who is not. Our job is to share God's truths, which this is God's truths, and to share the gospel. That's our job. Our job is not to try to determine who's saved and who's not saved, because we don't really know, because we don't know hearts and minds. So God is going to draw them to Jesus and... Jesus is the one that saves. Okay, so let's read. Where am I? Four, five, six. Five, six. Okay. We are on uh, seven. Is that right? No, we're on 6. John 14, 6. Which I've really enjoyed this intimate time of study and this um, doing my quiet time every day in the mornings because some of the scriptures are repetitive, but I'm learning them. So this morning, this was one of my scriptures and I already knew what it was before I got there. So John 14, 6 says, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. So Jesus and the Father. If you know Jesus, you know the Father. Jesus is the only way to the Father. So we have to uh, accept salvation through Jesus. That is the only way. And through salvation in Jesus, we are made complete. It completes us. Does it make us perfect? No. Absolutely not. We won't be perfect until we get in our perfected bodies. But that's not an excuse just to stay and uh, do things wrong on purpose because you know that God's going to forgive you or you know that Jesus um, is going to forgive you. Okay, so let's move on to John 15, 1 through 27. Well, that's, I'm not going to read all that. I'm sure it's great. I'm going to read the first part. Um, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, beareth fruit, he purgeth, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye accept ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. So Jesus is the vine, and we are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gathereth them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done for you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so shall ye be my disciples. As the Father hath loved me, so I loved you. Continue ye in my love. And I'm not going to read the rest because it goes all the way to 27 and it's very good. But I'm just, I'm not feeling like reading that much tonight. Okay, so let's go on to 8, Romans 10, 9. And that is uh, familiar also. Hey Seth, your daddy is here. Why don't you let him choose your show? Okay. All right. I have a visitor. My cat used to come and visit, but she's just been sleeping all day. I wonder if she doesn't feel good either. Okay, so Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation for the scripture saith whoever whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed okay so that was actually Romans 10 9 through 11 um, but that that is some good scripture that talks about confessing with our mouth Lord Jesus and we will be saved and believing in our heart unto righteousness and then confessing confessing Jesus as our Savior okay so where are we now 8 9 Acts 4 12 oh. uh, I'm having a backtrack now one of these days I'm going to do this perfectly. Okay, Acts 4.12 Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. 
Uh, now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. So they they saw the power of uh, they saw the power in the truth of what they were speaking. But there is no salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men. So Jesus is that name. All right. So let's do. Ephesians 2.8 Do you want to read Ephesians 2.8, Seth? For by grace are ye saved through faith and not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So God knew, God knows. God knew we would accept Jesus. God knows who will accept Jesus. But we don't. But again, we don't, so it's our job to share. Okay, so let's go to Titus 3, 5. Titus 3, 5 says, Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration, and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, in these things I will, that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works, these things are good and profitable unto men. So, um, according to his mercy, he saved us. The renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior. And we are joint, we are heirs according to the hope of eternal life. One more. One more, one more. My phone still hasn't started. It keeps trying to start. This is making me sad because I use this phone when I go to work. I use it for Seth. Okay, so let's read. Let's read John 3, 16 through 21. And why I like 21 through 21 is because it talks about condemnation. And it talks about walking in darkness rather than light. And I like that. Because I think that people just read John 3, 16 and go, Oh, Jesus died for me and he loves me. And that's true. Jesus died for you and he does love you. But... Jesus also wants us to walk in the light and not darkness. Okay, so John 3, 16 through 21 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. So when we believe on Jesus, when we are saved by Jesus, we are not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, 
and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. W-R-O-G-H-T. They are in God. Not sure what W-R-O-G-H-T means. I probably used to, but it's not wrought like R-O-T. So I always want to make sure that I make that clear. Okay, well that was the last verse that I wanted to read. And I don't know why my kid isn't in there where the TV is. He may be hungry. He hasn't been eating a lot. I'll feed you in a minute, okay? Go in there with Daddy, and I'll be in there in a minute. Okay? Go in there with Daddy and watch TV. All right, he doesn't want to. Okay, these are my notes from today. This phone is annoying me. It will not turn off. I guess I'm going to have to take the battery out of it and reset it. Alright, well, never mind. Okay, good morning, God. Good morning, child. I brought you a new day of mercies and blessings, of new opportunities to share my truth. I feel like I did that tonight. Those were God's truths out of His Word and the Gospel of Jesus. And I'm going to do that in a minute. And kind of tonight was about the Gospel of Jesus. It was about salvation. Salvation is the key to complete us. Um, a new day, child. And I said, thank you, God, for a new day of mercies and blessings, of new opportunities to share your truths. And the gospel of Jesus. A new day, God. Thank you for all of my blessings also. Please continue to protect them all. And he said, Child, so many things are taking place. Many shootings that didn't make sense. That don't make sense. Did they happen? Did people die? Etc. Is it or any of it truth? Was it planned? Many events to be questioned because of events of the past that were planned. And I said, I am a bit overwhelmed, God. I think I need a break from it. And I think I will clean today while I listen. Which was my plan. But then I got to where I didn't want to clean because I didn't feel well. Um, truth. Truth with lies are bombarding all of you every day. The government lies and pretends things are not happening. Trust only me, child. I have all the truth and no lies, just truth. Walk with Jesus, child. Listen only to my messengers chosen for these times. You were chosen for this bizarre time that does not make sense, child. Um. And I said, help me decipher the message today, God. Jesus changes hearts through salvation. Through salvation. Is this it? Salvation is the key to being complete in this life. <laughs> These are the thoughts that are coming to mind. Am I correct in what you want me to share? So, salvation is the key to complete. Yes, child, people all over the world need to be saved and completed through Jesus. He is the only way. He is the only path to me. He will lead all my children home. The farther on the path my children travel with Jesus, the closer they get to me and where I am. Many need to make the most important decision of their lives, child. It is the most important and determines their eternity destination. Many think they have many years to decide, but you see how quickly events are moving to the rapture, and soon their time will be up. And I said, I do see all that you are saying very clearly in your word and unfolding too. I feel that time is short, and many need to choose. I will share about salvation, God, and that through salvation, Jesus changes hearts. 
And thank you for meeting me today, God, and sharing with me. I love you with my whole heart, soul, mind, and strength. God, give my mama and daddy a hug. I love you too, my child. Now go be obedient to me, child, in all that I ask. The reunion is soon, child. The great awakening is happening now. And soon all will see and experience truth <laughs> hidden for so long. Eyes and ears will be opened soon, child. It will be so wonderful to have all my children, especially the innocent ones, home and safe with me again. And I said, Marin, off the go. Okay, well, I forgot to read what I wrote this afternoon. And I think it's pretty much parallel to everything that I've said. Um, but I found this song, We All Need Jesus by Danny Gokey and uh, Corin Hawthorne. So if you get a chance, go listen to it. It's really good. So this is what I wrote about it. Wow, I really like this new song by Danny Gokey featuring Corin Hawthorne. We all need Jesus. I love the lyrics of this song. Uh, Jesus came to save us all and he came to offer us all a better path to be on. So God can fulfill his plan and purpose for us. God loves us all the same. Excuse me. Whether we have been saved or not, but saved or not, but his plan Excuse me again. is for us to come into a relationship with him through Jesus. Even though all of us are loved by God, all of us will not be with him in heaven. That's exactly what Jesus said. Lord, Lord, not everyone who calls upon my name, Lord, Lord, will be with me in heaven. You know, we have to accept salvation. Um, his standard is Jesus. His standard is accepting grace through Jesus. His standard is accepting salvation through Jesus. There are no other paths to heaven except through the way, the truth, and the life. And that is Jesus. Jesus loves you. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. This is the truth. We all need Jesus now. Sin is the disease and Jesus is the cure. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. Time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. We read that while ago. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. Okay. Well, I think that it is time to offer an extension of the salvation that I've been talking about. And I want to do this bracelet. I really like this bracelet. I hope I can find the explanation of the bracelet. There it is. Okay. Then I gotta go take care of my son. I don't know why he's not in there with his daddy watching TV. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes. Romans 1.16 Okay, so here is the E-band which is made by E3 Resources. Okay, this is not mine. I did not make this up. I did make this. I made my salvation bracelet. I did that um, on my own. Let me know if you want one. I'll make you one and send it to you. Okay, so the gold color represents God, the creator of all who lives in heaven. The Bible says that God is light and in him there is no darkness. God is perfect. God loves you and he wants you. He wants to have a personal relationship with you. Jesus is God's Son. The Bible says that Jesus and God are one. I don't know what my kid is. He's been coughing. i got to get some medicine in him in a little bit. Okay, it's hard to get both of these centered at the same time. Okay, that's as good as it gets. The dark color represents sin, which is doing wrong things. God says that all have sinned and fall short of God's standard of perfection. Sin separates us from God. 
The Bible says that the penalty for our sin is death and or separation from God forever. The first question Mark is asking, how can your sins be removed so that you can know God? And so we move on to the next one, which is red. The red color represents Jesus' blood. Jesus lived a perfect and sinless life, but he died on a cross to pay the penalty for all of our sin. Again, the payment for sin is death. So Jesus paid the penalty for each of us. Why, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life with God. The good news is that you don't have to be separated from God forever by sin. So Jesus paid the price. So the white color represents each of us after our sins are washed away by Jesus. How can Jesus wash our sins away? When we believe in Jesus by following him, our sins are forgiven. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 9. I think we read that tonight. I'm not sure. So this question mark is asking, have you accepted Jesus' gift of forgiveness by believing in him? So if you have not, then let's say this prayer, and I'll leave spaces where you can repeat. God, thank you for loving me. I confess that I have sinned against you. I believe that your son Jesus died on a cross to pay for my sins and that you raised Jesus from the dead. I now put my faith only in Jesus to forgive me and save me from my sins. I confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you for your gift of eternal life. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So the next color is green. The green color represents growth in your relationship with God. These symbols show the areas of growth. So then we have some areas of growth here. So the greatest commandment is that we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and that we love our neighbor as ourselves. Love God, love people. Read the Bible each day to learn more about God and his love. So that's the Bible symbol. Then we got the little prayer, praying guy. Pray to God constantly and share your thoughts, needs, and desires with Him. Then we got the baptism signal symbol. When we are baptized, we are telling the world that we have committed our lives to Jesus and that we are a new person, like being born all over again. And then the fellowship sign, the handshake. Hang out with other Christians and encourage each other. Church is a good place to start. And then we have the world with a cross. Share the good news that Jesus can forgive sins when you trust in him. Tell as many people as you can. So those are the ways that we grow. And again, this is www.eban.com. And our pastor bought us some of these. So I have a couple 
and so I use this one in here I don't wear them though because I can't remember what the things stand for I have to have the paper I mean I can remember what the colors stand for like my salvation bracelet it has all the colors too um, it has like this green one is for God then the black is for sin the red is for Jesus dying for us the white one is that he washed our sins the blue one is baptism and the Holy Spirit the yellow is um, hmm forgot what the yellow is the purple is kingdom family and then this one is reading the Bible this one is praise I think it's prayer and this one is praise because I think those are important those are important um, with your growth is reading reading God's Word every day praying and praise I can't remember what the yellow one is uh, maybe eternal life we receive eternal life and um, we are a kingdom family. I don't know. I have a piece of paper that explains it. All right. Well, I think I have done everything that I came here to do. My child has passed out on the floor. He just really is not sleeping well because his throat itches and he wants to cough. No, he doesn't have COVID. It's just Texas allergies which are the worst this time of year. Okay, so let's go to Numbers and let's do the blessing from God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. can see if he's breathing. <laughs> he is barely he's sleeping pretty good. He hadn't had much sleep lately. Okay, well let's pray. And I do pray that God will bless you. That he will keep you. That he will protect you. That he will provide for you. I pray that if you're not saved and you didn't want to get saved tonight that you will consider that. Um, I pray that God will be very, very uh, real in your life and you will not have any questions that He is real, that Jesus is real, that the Holy Spirit is real. Okay, well, let's pray. God, we just come to you and we just thank you, God, for all the many blessings, for uh, sending Jesus to save us, God, for Him willing to pay it all on the cross for us for him to um, to offer us salvation through his gift for him to extend grace and mercy to us and forgiveness God we just praise you for these things we pray that you would help us to be more bold about sharing your word and sharing the gospel of Jesus, that you would help us to see through the eyes of Jesus, that we would see everyone through Je the eyes of Jesus, that everyone is invited into your kingdom, and that we don't have the right to try to figure out who is and who isn't, that only you know all hearts and minds, God, and only you know all the outcomes of everyone's lives. So, God, we just trust you. We just move forward with Jesus. On the path with Jesus, God, we just want to stay close because we want to be protected. And, God, we just pray that you would help us to be more and more in your presence every day. That you would help us to testify to the good things that you've done in our lives. And that you would help us to use these testimonies to encourage others. And God, we do pray for all truth to surface above the lies. We pray for our church family. We pray for everyone, God, that um, 
is just questioning whether you're real, God, that you would prove yourself to be very real to them. That you would open the eyes and the ears of the lost, God, and that you would allow the Holy Spirit to draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. Because Jesus is the only way. He is the the way, the truth, and the life. And there is no other way that anyone comes to you except through Jesus. So thank you again, God. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, well, I haven't seen my friend Josie this week. I'm going to have to call her and see how she's doing. Her phone may not be working, but anyway, have an awesome rest of your night. And awesome tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday. And, uh, much love. Much love. And cyber hugs. Till I see you again. And good night.